Chuck. Yeah. Wiles and Chuck. Once again, it's kind of a bittersweet result there. Jack hits a great shot. Jack serving, trying to hold on. Great shot there by Kane. Seven serving six as Kane Wiles and Chuck gets it back. I tell you, it's it's been a little bit of a log jam. Jack really putting up some resistance. It's his last do or die effort. A Custer's last stand, so to speak. Um, really, this has been the the loosest game. The quality of play before here has been really been good. This game, neither player has really been able to get much going. That's an unbelievable catch. Set up off the back wall. Once again, Jack Houston. You know, Jack won that point, but I think Kane just wears you down mentally because you've got to hit such a great shot to win the point. Jack's had three shots that would be winners against anybody else just to get a point against Kane. Doesn't mean it's impossible. This guy has a lot of credentials. Jack Husick, a lot of confidence that he's earned. Waslin Chuck, if he wins today, Aaron, will have beaten the number one, the number two guy in successive matches as he enters the final. Pretty impressive. And the good news for Kane, a very rare situation, it may get easier in the finals because the players in the other semifinal are ranked ninth and 13th. That's what happens sometimes. Uh, one bracket gets a little heavier weighted than the other, and you, as you pointed out, this side of the bracket certainly stronger. Well, this side of the bracket was very strong, and then the imbalance became even greater when Derek Robinson had that great win against Jason, the number one player in the world. So Manino bounced by Derek Robinson. That'll be our next show here on the Tennis Channel, our series of five from the Choice Hotel's Rockabell Championships. This is our first matchup as King Wozlinchuk tries to put away Jack Husek. Wozlinchuk from Canada. Husek from Michigan. Six feet, and then 190 pounds. Ooh, rare miss there for Kane. That, that's kind of his bread and butter. Low re-kill opportunity with the backhand in the front court. Seven. 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 Here, Jack hits a very good lob serve to Kane's forehand. Kane hits a good cross-court ceiling ball, forces Jack to take a forehand from up high, hits it straight in. Jack, Kane has a re-kill opportunity and skips it. That's a lot of action. Great get there by Jack. Set up off the back wall. Great get by Jack. Great get by Jack again. And skipped it. Wow, what a phenomenal rally by Jack. Just fighting fire with fire. Kane's getting to the impossible. And that rally, Jack got to the impossible. Two or three shots that very, very difficult gets. Once again, I think it frustrated Kane a little bit. He went for a little too much on that last forehand and skipped it. And Kane had it placed perfectly because Jack guessed left. Kane hit it off the wall to go right. Had he not skipped that ball, it was perfectly placed. Yeah, it was the right decision, wrong execution. As, what off, as often happens in championship play in any sport, certainly here in racquetball, eight to seven, Husick with, a, with his few leads in any of these games, but he needs one here and has it. Great shot. Oh, Jack Husick gets a two-point lead, making it nine-seven. Well, I, I gotta tell you, my hat is off to Jack, hanging in there in this game. Things were looking really bad. Here you see Jack again sticking with the lob serve. Kane goes and cuts it off. Jack gets a forehand set up in the center of the court and just drives it down the right wall for a winner. Husick again with a two-point lead. Needs two more to close this one out. Oh, wow. Skip Ball is within one of taking this one to the game four. Boy, a little bit of mental lapse here by Kane. Largely brought on, though, by Jack's effort. Jack hung in there. 
put a lot of pressure on Kane, and Kane's made some uncharacteristic er errors. That's his second forehand skip out of the last three points for Jack. Nice little run by Jack, the biggest of this match. And he wins game three, an unbelievable comeback. Jack Husick has done what nobody thought he could do. After losing 11-9, 11-5, he wins game three, 11-7. They will go to the fourth game as Kane, Waslinchuk, right, and Jack Husick battled it out for a chance to go to the finals. We'll be back to I'm Memphis in a moment. With U.S. Choice Hotels, the U.S. Open Racquetball Championships. Action from earlier today as Kane Waslinchuk with the white shoulder jersey and Jack Husick, the two and three seeds, battled out. A pump fist as Roslinchuk wins game one and two, but it was Husick who won game three, and it forced a game four, and this is the winning point from game three as Husick made it go one game farther, but Roslinchuk has really owned it. The back's alive action now, Lee Felsmo, Aaron Katz. Starting 10, 7, 6. Wasenchuk serving for the win in the semi Yeah! And he gets yeah! it! Yeah! 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 And you can see the emotions coming out now after his first U.S. Open final appearance. Let's look at the winning point. He won games one, two, and four. Again, Jack Music. Beautiful rollout. Well done. Music resisting and doing a great job. When we come back, we will talk to the winner, Kane Roslinchuk, as he advances to the finals of the Choice Hotels U.S. Open. Closer and closer to winning this tournament. The Choice Hotels U.S. Open Racquetball Championships, the first of our five match series here on the Tennis Channel. Lee Felsmo and Aaron Katz. And the winner today, it was a dramatic win for Kane, who went really the limit with the ability. And uh, Aaron Katz, give me your thoughts as uh, Kane Waslinchuk really took this thing over in the first and second game. Gave up some resistance uh, with Jack, but really took it over in the fourth game as well. Yeah, he really looked like he was in control the whole match. Jack hung in there, played hard, played well, but Kane just always had the edge. Jack did sneak out that third game, but you never got the sense that Jack was turning the tide. We've got Kane Wilson Chuck right now. Kane, tremendous job. You've had a tough year. We've talked about that uh, in the post game, but this game was really yours. You were very confident coming in. Let's take your thoughts first on this great match with a pretty good competitor. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, Jack is uh, Jack's a great competitor, you know, and uh, there's always this aura when we get to play when we get to play each other. You know, we're the two young guns and we're the two guys coming up. So, uh, you know, I'm always I'm always trying to make a statement to him, and uh, you know. I was I was obviously more confident, um, you know, having never lost to him uh, in on the IRT. So, uh, you know, I just came and uh, I, I thought to myself, I just played uh, like I played yesterday. Um, I'd be fine and and keep the pressure on him. And um, you know, near the end there, he he skipped a couple crucial balls, and I was able to uh, take advantage of that. Kane, let's take a look at some of your points. And you talk about these uh, athletic efforts. We'll take you back to the winning point in the second game. You went on a six-point run in that game. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, there was uh, I, I hit a couple of great. Uh, Great serves. Um, I hit that serve at, at to put me up to ten, or and uh, you know a, after that, after that I was uh, I was confident. I just thought to myself, get a get it in the play, and uh, you know he could either skip the ball, set me up, or uh, you know I could put it away, and it, and it happened to uh, I happened to plan it right. Aaron Katz, and thoughts of this great young champion? Well, Kane, the, the thing that looked like really separated you from Jack today was not only the serve and return of serve that you spoke about, but your re-killing ability. There were so many rallies where Jack hit an effective offensive shot, and you were able to hit an incredible re-kill. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, well, I mean, Jack, uh, you know, Jack doesn't skip many balls, and, uh, you know, he, he, he leaves, a, I, I feel like he leaves a lot of balls up because uh, my power, I think he has a little bit of problem with my power, um, but, 
it, that's the key is, uh, you know, you got to keep them off balance. You can't always just wait for the ball. Um, you know, a lot of balls come off the back wall. Um, you know, and, and the key the key to beating Jack is re-killing. And, uh, you know, you just have to uh, you have to stick in there and realize that he isn't going to skip any many balls. And uh, and that's what I did today. But uh, in the uh, in the third game, um, I kind of got a little lackadaisy, and, uh, and he turned it up a little bit. But, uh, you know, I told myself, one more game and, and you can go home. You don't have to play till tomorrow. All right, well, thank you very much. Our congratulations. You go off and celebrate. You've got a championship coming up. Our congratulations to Kane Wozlinchuk. He advances to the final in our first matchup in our series of five here on the Tennis Channel. A great day, Aaron Katz, and the Young Guns are really here to make a statement. We will continue with our series. Next week, we go to the second semifinal, five in a row here on the Tennis Channel. Thank you to Aaron Katz. Congratulations to Kane Wozlinchuk. We'll see you in our next this channel. Today in Memphis, Tennessee, as we get set to come inside for the Choice Hotels U.S. Open Racquetball Championships, the Memphis Racquet Club, the state of Tennessee, and we are all set for the second the Tennis Channel. This is the men's semifinals right here from the Memphis Racquet Club, and it's a great event for racquetball. Leif Elsmo, along with Aaron Katz, former pro in the racquetball pro circuit. Interesting semifinals, Aaron. We've got Derek Robinson seated eight against Shane Vanderson, who was seated 13. So we've had a lot of the top seeds bumped out. Let's take a look at how Derek Robinson got to this game. Well, his first two matches were relatively easy, uh, even though he won a tiebreaker a second match. The fifth game was not close. And then he had a very tough match with Mike Guidry, another veteran pro. And then the upset of the tournament in the quarterfinals, he took out the number one seed, Jason Menino, and defending national champ. Let's get a good look at Derek Robinson. They call him Big D. He is huge and imposing. He has his own thoughts about what he has to do to win against Shane. But first, we'll take a look at what he did last night. This is a little bit of a highlight from his huge match when he played perfectly against Menino, a former champion of the U.S. Open and the current number one ranked player. There's Menino, and he was absolutely perfect. He wants to win tonight. In a match today with Shane, it's going to be important that uh, I control the tempo just as I've done my entire career. And uh, I feel com comfortable that I can do that with serves, uh, splats, down the lines, cross courts. I feel very confident, yet uh, um, obviously got to come prepared to play Shane. So Derek Robinson, Big D, he will be a formidable one, about 6'3", 6'4", very big and strong, was perfect in the game to get here. He will have to be perfect to get past Shane Vanderson, who is an outstanding athlete. And his road to this final wasn't easy either. The semifinal. Yeah, no, very, a very interesting matchup. I'm looking forward to watching it. Shane, really a surprise to get here. Got through Gil DeRosa in a tough first round match. Then beat a tough Javier Moreno in the round of 32s. And then he had his big win in the tournament, which is the second biggest upset. He took out six-time world champion Cliff Swain and then kept coasting and beat Chris Crowther in the quarters, which was a, also a good victory for him. Let's take a look at some of the highlights with Shane Vanderson, great-looking athlete, one of the young studs here at the Racquetball Pro Tour. And here he is against, in his quarterfinal matchup against Crowther's. Nice matchup, kind of cruised through and won this one. Shane Vanderson has his thoughts, or he has to the beat Robinson. 
Yeah, I definitely see myself as the future. I think the future is the young guns out on tour right now. Uh, there's myself, there's Kane, and with this tournament right here, I see it as a big stepping stone. And I see myself right in the middle of the mix for the next, you know, hopefully 10, 15 years. Well, that's a good look at Shane Banderson. We've got two great semifinalists, the second and a series of five on the Tennis Channel. Aaron Katz and I will be back with this great semifinal matchup in just a moment. The 2003 Choice Hotels U.S. Open Racquetball Championships are brought to you by the Choice Hotels International Family of Hotel Brands with over 4,500 locations and eight different brands worldwide offering every type of accommodation in every price range. We meet all your travel needs. For reservations, visit us at choicehotels.com today. Choice Hotels, we'll see you there. And by the United States Racquetball Association. Visit www.usra.org for your link to the greatest game on earth. And by Racquetball Magazine. Get instruction from the pros, the latest news, and much more. See us at racquetballmagazine.com to subscribe. And by the Tennis Channel, the only place to see all the top racquetball pros in action. Log on to thetennischannel.com for complete listings. Welcome back to Memphis, Tennessee, the Choice Hotel's U.S. Open for racquetball. And you're looking at the 75-year-old Orpheum Theater on just off Field Street, actually. That's capital of the Memphis Blues hub here in Tennessee. And we are inside the Memphis Racquet Club getting ready for this fantastic semifinal matchup. Lee Elsmo, along with Aaron Katz. Will be serving first. Let's take a look at the rules zero of the game here. We talk about the IRT, the Pro Tour. And here we are in a championship. Here are the rules. Let's go through them pretty quick. Uh, the fact that all matches are best of five. You have to win three. All games are won by two points. You play to 11. No court hinders in the pro. Points are determined to serve uh, in the game. You've got a referee, a judge, in this case, standing directly behind the court, Jason Thorner. Yep. And again, right they've got to win three to advance to the final. Games are to 11. You win by two. Zero. Serving zero. So we're looking right now at Sugar Shane Vanderson in the serve box. I think you may have just coined a new nickname for him. Well, that was uh, not me. That was, I think, Mike Gidry. Or, uh, or who wrote that article we just looked at? Mike Ceresia? Mike Ceresia, I think, zero. from Canada gave him that nickname. All right. Well, he's going to like that, and he deserves it with the way he's played this week. Eric Robinson, a uh, tall drink of water, six foot four, with his Wilson dark jersey on. Zero. This, this is a really interesting matchup, Leaf. You got Shane Vanderson, who's never been anywhere near here before in the U.S. Open or any other pro tournament. This is only the second time he's gone past the first round playing against a kind of a journeyman tour player, a very solid player in Derek Robinson. But Derek, in his own right, has only been to the finals of one other pro event. One other pro event. And here's a guy who teaches maybe as well as anybody. He does a great clinic, tours a lot. You're talking about Derek Robinson. Yeah, and Derek's a, he's a terrific player, and he's been a solid pro, but uh, he's getting towards pretty close to rarefied air here with the finals of the U.S. Open. No question about it. He comes in with an eight seed off that IRT ranking zero, of eight, and then Shane Vanderson, 13. So eight against 13. That side of the bracket really got shellacked as far as the top seeds are concerned. Yeah, it sure did. And the, these two are largely responsible for it. Shane took out Cliff Swain, who's a little bit beyond his prime, but still a tremendous player in rank number four on the zero, tour. And zero. Derek, in a huge win last night, took out the number one player in the world and defending world champ, Jason Menino. So these guys are on their way here. It's no fluke that they're here. Well, they really did. And uh, Derek Robinson, One, six foot four player zero. in black. Quite frankly, he was very frank about his in his post game comments. Uh, Aaron, he said that was just the best game I've ever played. He said, no question, I've never played that well. Well, 
I think he uh, was being honest, and uh, it was a tremendous match and tremendous win. I mean, Jason came here very prepared, and Jason played well. Derek just had too much, which is it's not often number eight meets number one when number one plays well. But here we are in the semifinal. Derek obviously now up two nothing. And now he gets another point, three nothing. He gets command of this one. And I, I'm real curious to see how Shane three. handles this moment. This is a big moment for a young racquetball player that's never been here before. Derek, a lot of experience, been playing the tour for over 10 years. I think he's much better suited for this ambiance. Used to being in front of people. His Wilson uh, Big D Road Show, a great clinic, uh, well known throughout the country. So, right out. as you said, he's seasoned in traveling and being in front of people. And here's Sugar Shane Vanderson, just a wide eyed deer. Zero. Yeah, you know, I, he just graduated college, and to Shane's credit, he's been a terrific amateur and was a top junior for years and really postponed focusing on the game until he got out of college. And now that he's out of college, he's decided to commit to the Pro Tour and give it a chance. The winner here will take on Kane One, Russell three. And we saw him in our last week uh, semifinal here on the Tennis Channel. He just did a masterful job against the top competitor in Jack Huchek. Yeah, he's uh, he's unbelievable. It's uh, the depressing thing for these three, two players seven, is they're going to battle it out today and then worry about playing Kane, who right just looked out of this world. He's playing at a level that I, I don't think the tour has seen in years. One, a great seven, story three. that we'll get into when we get to that men's finals in our Five match series here on the Tennis Channel. Right out. This court's very interesting as you watch this court. It's in the Memphis Tennis Club, a yeah. private Three. club, a beautiful Six club. With tennis courts outside where they hold a very famous tennis event every year for St. Jude's. This event supports St. Jude's Children's Research as well. But this is a portable court made Point. to travel and be the center of attention in this most prestigious game for racquetball as we look at. Derek Robinson four, take a 4 1 lead. One. And Lee, if you bring up a good point, there's it creates some unique areas in this match because it is the only only tournament they play on this court and it's open in the back so we may see some balls fly out of the court which winds up adding a new rule twist that we're not used to seeing in the other tournaments it's like they're playing in a convertible for these guys because they're used to playing in a totally enclosed capsule right up. good shot there by Shane I, I don't like the way Shane looks now he's taking a lot of loose looking shots he doesn't One, look very focused, very five. intense. He looks, like you mentioned, a bit of a deer in the headlights right now. Um, he's really going to have to get a little more intense. Derek Robinson enjoying a 5 1 lead in game one. Yep. Side out, gets the ball back. He'll be in the service box. And he certainly looks very relaxed, very five, confident right now, one. Derek. And this is the chance of a lifetime for Derek. Semifinals of the U.S. Open, playing a terrific player in Shane Vanderson, but a yet unproven commodity on the Pro Tour. Big Grand Hold Slam, big Grand Slam event, the biggest event for racquetball, and as you can imagine, the prize money reflects One, that. When you get to the finals, the winner will get eight thousand dollars, the loser gets four. And in addition to the prize money, this has double ranking points. So a lot of these players, not only is the ranking critical, um, a lot of their bonuses are based on how they are ranked as well. So very significant event in the year's rankings, uh, both current and year end. Russell Enchuk, the gentleman waiting for these guys, uh, comes in ranked third. He could jump to one off of this one win possibly. Is that possible? Here, take a look at a replay off this event. Good serve there. Comes off the back wall a little bit, and Derek calmly steps up and splats it into the right wall. So that is Derek Robinson again in the black. Good get there by Shane. Good get by Shane. Great, Great shot. Well, that's a good rally. Maybe that rally will work Shane into it. He made a couple of great gets. Derek didn't hit a bad passing shot. Shane got a little looser, a little and, looser here. And you'll see here, Shane made some great gets. Derek hit a good lob nick into the backhand. Here's the first great get by Shane. Dives and gets it. Again, One, dives and gets five. it. And now Derek spins him around on the back wall, and Shane twists and just rolls it out. Very tough shot. And uh, the most comfortable shot, as you mentioned, for Shane Vanderson. Just looked like he got it rolling. Another gear kicked in. Short serve. Talk about what is legal on that serve in that service box. Five, serving you, one. What is legal, you've got to hit the serve beyond that second red line. And in the pros, you only get one chance. In the amateurs, you get two. But in the pros, you only get one chance. 
And there Shane hit it short, so he lost okay. the serve. So there's the service box. You're getting a good look at it right now, and you've got to hit it beyond the dark line. The second the red line. The second one. Red line. And so when you're five. serving it, your front foot can't go entirely beyond the front line. So you've got to serve within that box and get it to pass the second red line. And similar to tennis, the serve is a dominant force, and a good server can control the match. The only difference is in racquetball, you get to keep serving until the other person sides you out. So if you can get hot with your serve, oh, you can run out a whole game. The only difference would be that in tennis, you get a point if you're not serving and you win. That's here, right. You, not, you have to be serving to get the point. Yeah. Things do not look good now for Shane. He looks real uncomfortable. Derek looks very confident, very Six, comfortable, very relaxed. Um, we may make up some of the lost time if it keeps going like this. Leaf that with that long semifinal before this. And he was really in a magic yeah, hold it, hold it. bracket when you talk about it, where he came from. Uh, he played Cliff Swain, who was not totally healthy, had a little bit of an injury One, situation, ended seven, up forfeiting that match uh, some, at some part in there. Then he went against Crother, who upset Beltran, the other highest seed above him. So it kind of worked for him in that regard. Yeah, no, he, he came through what appeared to be, even before it started, the Two, softer side of the seven, bracket. Six. And here's Shane, first ace he's hit today. He gets down on the ball, rips it into the backhand corner. Great serve. Once again, he needs something to get him into this match because right now he does not look very focused. Well, we went back to live action. Three, and, uh, serving six. Three, six. He's climbing back in as shaky as he might be. He's only three points away from Derek Robinson. Three, serving six. Another big serve. Good return by Derek. Yep. And Shane's on a little run here. He's gone from 1-6 to 4-6. He's hit a couple of good serves. Oh, I think he needs to keep six. staying down, getting down low, hitting his drive serve, and see what's happened. We'll see what happens. That's what's brought him here. He's a power player, a lot of energy, very quick. Oh, well, if you would have asked Terry Graham and the Wilson folks, well, who are you going to be dressing for the semifinals? Six. The Wilson jacket, the Wilson four. shirt. They'd be getting Cliff Swain's jersey already. Well, and here's Derek, Big D, taking over for his buddy. Considering we've had uh, seven U.S. Open so far since the event was uh, conceived, and Cliff has been in the seven, semis of seven, every one. Four. So certainly a surprise not seeing him this year, even as he's getting up in years. He's still one of the top players on tour. Robinson seven to four. And now he gets an 8-4 advantage in game one. Oh, what a great shot that was. And Shane set him up a little bit, but Ben was sitting in the front Eight. of the court, and Derek just Four. flat rolled a backhand pinch. On roll, 9-4. Good timeout by Shane. He, he needs to stay in this game, even if he doesn't come back and win it. So Shane Robinson is beating Shane Vanderson. Vanderson takes a timeout. We'll come back to Memphis in just a moment with our semifinal from the Choice Hotels U.S. Open Racquetball Championships. Four, back in Memphis, we pick up the action with a side out after a side out by Robinson. Score the same, nine to four, but now it's four. Shane Vanderson serving to Derek Robinson with a nine. Good timeout by Shane, regrouped, took a little time, came back on the court, got the serve back. Yep. Scored a point there, got five nine. Once again, Shane's new to this environment, so he needs to hang in there, keep plugging. Even if he doesn't come back and win this game, maybe it'll bring him into the match and he'll be more prepared for game two. If you're right, he'll start blocking out some of this uh, stadium stuff. It's really got to be shocking to his system. And then just start playing the game, keeping his head inside the 20 by 40. Six, seven, nine. And he's at six, nine now, respectable showing. Hey, if he can sneak this game out, that'd even be better. But as I say, even if he doesn't sneak the game out, hopefully he'll come out game two a little more focused, a little more relaxed. Good serve. That's a great, up. great shot by, by Derek. I mean, to be six foot four and get down that low, nine, pretty good drive seven, serve. Is a tremendous shot. Good lob, Nick. 
Yep. Well, that's just a terrible, terrible shot selection by Shane. Derek had a very yeah. deep, good lob mix, and Shane just tried to do way too much with it. Puts Derek within nine points of a game one win. Here's a setup by a terrible choice. Ooh. Boy, Shane really got away with one, you think? Yeah, he got away with one, and he just... Six. Shane made a very bad decision here. Here he gets, comes up, cuts it off, gets kind of a weak return, keeps Derek on the defense, and here he hits it too high, so Derek's able to cover it and stay in the rally. Fortunately for Shane, Derek hit it right back to him and was able to re-kill it. But Derek, Shane should have backed up on that ball and hit a forehand much lower than where he contacted that ball. Well, side out from Shane. Here's Derek serving again. Second time for game one win. Doesn't get it. Side out again. Yeah, that's a great shot by Shane, but he, he's very feast or famine now. Six serving ten. Six serving ten. There is Derek Robinson. Two opportunities to win this one. Didn't put it away. Right the young kid hits his third shot at it, and he's got to go ahead and do one of these because if uh, he lets Shane get out of this one, no telling what might happen, right? Yeah, and you know, you talk about a, a lot about athletes' eyes and Michael jo Jordan with the steely eyed determination. Right now, you look at Derek Robinson's eyes. He looks very, very focused, understands the opportunity that's here for him. And Shane, right now, kind of looks like he's not quite sure what he's doing there. See if he gets relaxed as we go on. Lob serve. It's a good shot. So Vanderson has come back to within three. Seven, ten. Seven, serving ten. Six with the lob keeps Derek oh, yeah. well back of center court. He's really commanding center court, if nothing else. Yeah, no, and those those were two good lobs. Kept Derek very tight to his forehand. And here he's going to stick with it until it stops working. Derek changes it up a little bit, goes to the ceiling. And there's another just wild shot selection by Shane going for an overhand splat. Ten, serving eight. Fourth chance for him to get this one over. New serves, Z to the forehand. Set up for Shane. Let's see what he does with it. Leaves it up off the back wall. And Derek skipped it. Skip ball. He's had four shots to yeah. end game one. And Shane Van Vanderson. And that was a good on. opportunity, too. Shane missed his backhand, set him up off the back wall. Good ceiling ball by Derek. Short ceiling ball by Shane. Back wall set up again. Good get by Shane, set up for Derek, and kills it. Hey, that's a beautiful backhand kill by Derek. He really stayed down on that one, made sure he killed it. And a good time out here. He's been to the box a few times with he 10. He certainly has. And he, he wants, wants to make sure this yep. one is handled. I think you'll see him take his time here, clean off his glasses, get into the box, and really think about a serve here, because you never want to serve too many times with 10. It's kind of a bad omen. Especially if you uh, end up not winning the game. Ten then serving eight. Then it's more than an omen, Leaf. It's just a bad thing. Side out. Side out again. Well, it's kind of five or six times he's yeah. going. This would be a disappointing loss for Derek because he's played well, he's controlled the game, and Shane's kind of been all over the map. He's hit some great shots, but played some very loose points. And there's a setup off the back row. Right. 9-10 for well, Vanderson serving. I may have been here as Derek has taken his timeout. Full timeout by Derek Robinson. He had his opportunities five times at least. Couldn't capitalize. Right. Yeah, I may have been a little bit harsh on Shane. After all the stuff that I've been throwing. And now he faces.